Now the show that's always more than metal, Headbangers Ball. We're Machine Head and it's our pleasure to host tonight's festivities which are gonna be centered around telling you, you everything you need to know about our new album, The More Things Change, due for release on the 24th of March. Yeah, the countdown is on tonight and we're gonna be showing you some special reports which document the making of the record as well as ch letting you check out for the first time our brand new video of 10 Ton Hammer. There's also a launch for a fantastic new competition where you could be the first Machine Head fan ever to hear our first new album and review it for the ball. Plus, we've got some special guests hanging out with us tonight. We've got Glenn Tipton from Judas Priest, Lemmy of Motorhead. Lemmy! So the metal is definitely flowing tonight here, and we're firing this show up with our video old. Check it out. Well, it took a little bit while longer than we expected, but our new album, The More Things Change, will finally hit the shops on the 24th of March. A little bit later on in the show, we're going to be launching our new competition where you could be the first Machine Head fan in Europe to hear it and review it on camera for the Headbangers Ball, so watch out for that. And uh, about it taking so long, you know, uh, unfortunately, sometimes things don't go as planned and, you know, it obviously got delayed a bunch of times and we want to apologize, you know, somewhat to the fans who, uh, you know, were expecting it or whatever, but ultimately we were trying to make it better for you because we felt that, you know, we felt we had set a standard with Burn My Eyes as far as like production and songwriting and we really wanted to keep up with that standard and, um, you know, we made, we made every attempt to do that and finally, Ultimately, I think we're happy with it, which means that we, you know, we can stand behind it and we think that you'll be happy with it because if we can't stand behind it, we don't want to put it out. And so, we'll continue on now with the first uh, video that we did for this record that took so goddamn long to finish. And uh, this is in fact the final version of 10 Ton Hammer now. If you were watching last week, we had a rough cut of the video that we uh, accidentally sent the uh, wrong version, so uh, check it out. If you taped it, you got a cool, never-to-be-seen-again version of that video. So for tonight, here's the video the way we wanted you to see it. It's the real deal. Check it out. Ten Ton Hammer. That was Cathedral with another song, Night of the Seagulls, recorded live at the Headbangers Ball studio. Next up, we're going to turn the clock back to February 1996 with the lovely, gorgeous Vanessa and the Headbangers Ball team came to visit us in our home city of Oakland, California. Our new drummer, Dave McLean, had just joined the band. The band was holed up in our practice studio in the early stages of writing the songs for our new album. And uh, once again, those sneaky Headbangers Ball cameras captured some of the early action for the first part of this special report that documents a lot of stuff. Uh, and if you notice, the uh, 10 ton hammer version that we play on here, I barely even knew the lyrics to the damn song, so uh, I was kind of making things up as we go for the cameras. So check out this documentation of the making of the more things change. What up? Just kicking it here in cold ass Oakland. So here we are, we're at Jackson Street Studios. You got a new drummer, and we're gonna hook up with him right now because we're gonna go inside and check out. What's happening with Machine Head? We had been contacted about Dave. We had actually tried to contact him to do the tour, but he was like, nah, I don't want to do it. The drummer that we got, so. <laughs> so, uh, so we just kind of like, you know, figured that he was just, just wasn't going to do it. And we just kind of rid him off, you know. And then all of a sudden, like halfway through the tour, we found out through a couple of pe friends of ours that he was interested and wanted to try out. And so we uh, gave him a tryout and he was just amazing, you know. I mean, like all of us were just, you know, me and Adam were like looking at each other at practice, like trying not to smile, like, oh. Yeah, it was uh, definitely a turning point. It was at, uh, I was in, my last band was Sacred Reich. We were in the process of mixing our new album and stuff. And it was just like, it was a bad time. It was, I was totally into doing the gig and stuff. So, you know, they got the replacement drum or whatever. And halfway through the tour, I called Borovoy, mutual friend of the band. And, I, you know, I was like, dude, I'm 100% into doing this Machine Head gig. And, you know, call them and tell them. And so he did. And like late December, I came out and did the audition with him. And it was very cool. When 
I first joined the band, we were, we were starting on new stuff, and it was like, I didn't want to overstep my boundaries as far as like putting this here and that. So, you know, they kind of tell me, guide me in certain areas, like, you know, try this here or whatever. It's getting to the point now where I can I feel more comfortable, where I can like, well, I'll put this in, and if it, you know, if it sucks, it sucks, and they'll tell me. So, it's, you know, it's getting better and better, so it's cool. <laughs> We're always pushing to try and make the songs the best they can be because, you know, I mean, I just, I think we set a standard for ourselves with Burn My Eyes and we do not want to, we're, we are not going to fall below it. I don't think it's a, a huge departure from Burn My Eyes because, I mean, you know, we didn't like write Burn My Eyes just to be the heaviest band or whatever. I mean, that's just like the music that we like, you know, it's the style of music that we just prefer and no one was doing at the time, so we did it, you know. So, I mean, a lot of the stuff is still extremely heavy, fast, you know. I mean, they're still singing and, you know, a little bit of, you know, like melody or whatever you want to call it, but it's going good. Right now, we're mainly focusing on settling in with Dave, you know, working on just getting the groove going. We got some shows lined up next month, and uh, the new stuff's coming along real good, but it's still kind of infantile, and so. You know, hope you, we have your continued support because we're gonna put out one crushing record and bet your life on it. <laughs> Ay, 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 how about them lyrics, huh? Pretty uh, crazy, but, you know, that's kind of like something that, how the songs evolve, you know, and eventually it becomes a lot better. So check it out, though. We got a new video from the Rising British Walkers dub war. This is a million dollar love, check it out. All right, that was Rage Against the Machine, another one of our video choices. Tom Morello, one of our favorite guitar players, an amazing video. Well, uh, unless you've been uh, checking your butthole for hemorrhoids for the last past half a year, you already know that our new album, The More Things Change, is going to be out on the 24th of March. Anyways. In August last year, the Headbangers Ball team came once again and caught up with us, this time at Scream Studios in Los Angeles, to see how things were going. We were in the mixing stages of the album, so here's a reminder of how we were getting on. Check it out. Yeah. MTV is going to turn into MHTV because we've come down to Scream Studios in the Valley to catch up once again with Machine Head and I've got Rob and Adam joining me here at the studio so uh, lovely to see you guys again how are you doing doing damn good <laughs> Super selective um, for the tracks that we're going to actually make it onto the new album. Well, uh, we, we don't write songs that that are just not good enough to be on the album. If they're not good enough to be on the album, we keep on working at them and working at them until they are good enough. We realize that you know the, the, there's going to be a lot of people like you know that think that we fell off just because we had some changes or whatever. And so I mean I think we made it. A, a real heavy attempt to like try and be, you know, like try and come up with really original riffs. If anything sounded like close to any band that we were listening to, then it was like gone. And, you know, I mean, some, some of the songs, you know, got put together and taken apart like, you know, three, four times before we were even happy with it, like stripped down to nothing and then starting over again. So we did have a very high standard and, and I think we lived up to it. But you've called the album um, The More Things Change. What is the significance of that album title, if anything? Absolutely nothing. But that's a saying over here in the States, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, the more the, the band has changed, you know, but it's really stayed the same. And just like overall, there's just been like, you know, we just got a lot of flack, especially here in the States for like kind of, you know, violent lyrics or whatever. And kind of like, 
you know, they're just like, oh, you guys got this, like, gangster image and all this crap, but it's like, you know, whatever. It's like we're, we're just singing about the things that we saw growing up or whatever, and, you know, it's not like those things weren't around 40 years ago. Right. You know, they've still been around. It's more things change, more it stays the same. We just want to approach it as a different album because it is, so we're, we're trying new things, trying different things in the studio and you know, making it as heavy as best as we can make it. It will crush. But the best thing for us to do is just kind of do it, like get the best performance out of the individual and then try and build on that. You know, like we come back and we do like a lot of guitar tracks and stuff, so it's best just to have that solid drum beat down there to just like lay the foundation so that we can build up on it. <laughs> This isn't like a concept record or anything. I mean, it's just it's just a new batch of songs, and I guess they're all kind of tied together by, you know, just that they're all re reality based or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's no like concept to it. For one thing, I mean, the, like for the three of us, the main thing that really helped us the most was just the touring so much. You know, we just became such better performers, such better. You know, just I think we all got stronger at whatever instrument we were doing, whether it was my throat or you know Adam's bass or Logan's guitar, and so. That pushed us. I mean, we didn't really push ourselves in the writing. We were just trying to make, you know, songs, man. That's all we want to do is just write good songs. You know? We went in there with one thing in mind, is that, and that was to fucking make killer songs and a fucking crushing record that would fucking stomp a mud hole and burn my eyes as ass. <laughs> yes, brother! <laughs> How about that fucking Adam guy, man? He's <laughs> you gotta fucking great. <laughs> you gotta love that guy. Fucking A. Next up, we got, we got a video from one of our favorite bands who always get the adrenaline pumping. This is the Deftones with their not so boring video. Bored. Check it out. Headbangers Ball. Well, if you checked out one of the eight sold out shows Wasp had across Europe recently, you'll already know that Blackie Lawless and his cohorts overstepped the boundaries of good taste by a small step or maybe even a mile, depending on your personal perspective. The new Wasp stage show includes the beheading of a pig and uh, my personal favorite, a nun being raped by a knife strapped to Blackie's cod piece. Needless to say, there's quite a bit of blood flying around. Marilyn Manson have also continuously courted controversy with their onstage show antics. And it's no secret that Mr. Munster, or Mr. Manson himself, is a uh, big Wasp fan. So Headbangers Ball took the opportunity to recently ask Blackie what he thinks of the Marilyn Manson. Here on Headbangers Ball, right about now, we got a real special guest here, Mr. Lemmy Kilmeister from Motorhead. Yes, hello. How you doing, Lemmy? Fine. You? I'm doing wonderful. Good, let's move right along. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving right along. You guys are in the middle of a European tour right now, I'm told, and uh, maybe you want to talk about that a little bit, tell us how's, how's it been going. Yeah. And brief. Keep it short. Please. Well, we've been in Germany and France, and we've gone to Italy and Spain, and the French store was cutting off because the guy didn't have the money, and then we took it to the bank with a gun in his ear, and he gave it to us, and I'm stuck in London for two weeks. Basically, that's it. <laughs> However, I could go on. But I won't. Please go on. No, no, I'm not going to go on. No. All right. We were wondering. Uh, not just like this. <laughs> if you guys had any uh, future plans right now after this, after the forthcoming rest of the tour. Well, I'm going to go on breathing and. Uh, Probably have a rattlesnake farm in North Dakota, and every summer I shall set them free. What are we doing after this? We're doing Italy and uh, Spain after these gigs, and then we're going to uh, probably South America and Japan, and then make another album, you know, as one does. As one does, yes. As one will, You've as they pay one to. What's yes. that? As they pay one to. This is true. You've been being paid for some time, mm. or one would think. But, uh, <laughs> Let's not get into that one. <laughs> long time. Let's not think. Let's, uh, you know. One would wonder how, after all these years, what kind of, what keeps you motivated? What makes you tick, you know? The sex, really. Ah. You know, because, I mean, anybody who says he didn't get into this thing, the sex is a lie, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> everybody did, you know. Because there was all them girls around the guy with the guitar, and you were standing watching it. And you hated it, right? So <laughs> you got a guitar, you know. <laughs> 
I mean, I got a guitar at school and I couldn't play it, but I was immediately surrounded by women, you know. Later on, I had to learn to play, obviously, you know. You had a four-stringed guitar. No, I had a, my mother had an old Hawaiian guitar. Uh, this guitar shaped, the acoustic thing, you know. But, and that immediately got you surrounded by immediately. women? Immediately. You wow. gotta remember, this was 1959, you know. But that's all it took. That's all it took. Back then, damn it. Had to learn quick, though. <laughs> <laughs> Better learn a couple of power chords, all quick. <laughs> a couple of Elvis tunes or something. We were wondering, uh, just recently we, we found out, and I guess the rest of the world's finding out now, is uh, I guess Donington, the uh, monument to the monsters of rock, is now uh, no longer the monsters of rock. It's the monsters of indie Alternative. We were wondering what maybe you thought about that. That's that's where the alternative. Alternative to what? They sound the same to me. It's just guys with guitars and drums, right? You know. Mm -hmm. Alternative. If it's alternative, it'd be like Japanese nose flutes. That would be alternative. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, I really don't give a shit, you know, because we, we only played Donington once in our lives anyway. It ain't gonna make no difference to my, you know, schedule. Yeah. It's too bad, you know. I mean, if people would r rise up and create some sort of outcry, maybe they wouldn't stop it. Yeah. You know, Definitely. But nobody will. We just sit there and take it. And it's a shame, because we're two independent bands, so. Yeah, well, I don't give a damn what they do. Can't stop me. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, Thank you. Time, Are you coming apart? <laughs> so you've made it to the final part of the Headbangers Ball, where it's time to launch our fantastic competition, where you could be the first person in Europe to hear the new album, The More Things Change. A lucky winner will be flown to London on March 23rd to hang out with us and be the first in line to buy our album when the record store opens at midnight. You'll be kitted out with a portable CD player to slam in the new record and give it an instant response to the Headbangers Ball on camera. So if you want to win this fantastic prize, just answer this simple question. What is the title of the first video track from The More Things Change? Put your answer on a postcard along with your name, age, address, breast size, phone number, and send it to Machine Head Competition, MTV Headbangers Ball, P.O. Box 1384, London, NW18UH, England. Or you can email it to the usual headbanging email address. So while you get your thinking caps on here, here's another video of our choice. You just can't get to see this shit in America. This is a cradle of filth with malice through the looking glass. Check it out. For this week, but if you have a comment or a video request for the program, or maybe you'd like to let Europe know what you think about the plans for Donington or the, what the split of Sepultura means to you, then please drop us the show a line at MTV's Headbangers Ball, P.O. Box 1384, London. NW18UH England, or you can email to headbangersball at mtvne.com. Or something like that. Anyway, uh, if you want to contact us about this show, then uh, use those addresses and uh, they'll uh, supposedly pass it on to us. <laughs> anyway, we want to thank everybody who was down here, Glenn Tipton, and especially uh, Lemmy because uh, that was probably one of the, the highlights of my entire life, getting to meet and interview that man. Uh, we're going to be touring with uh, Napalm Death and hopefully some friends of ours from the Bay Area in April and May. So we hope to see you out on the road at one of those shows. Until then, man, thanks for waiting. Sorry to make it so long, but for all the people that stood with us and stayed with us, keep supporting us, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks for MTV for letting us take over the airwaves, and we'll check you out on tour. See ya! Yeah.